This is a demonstration of the use of a Kendrick extrication device. The indications for the use of a CAD are a seated, stable patient, complaining of head, neck or back pain, indicative of spinal trauma, who is unable to self-extricate. The contraindications would be an unstable patient or a patient who is barring access to another patient who is unstable. The first thing we're going to do is take BSI. We're going to approach my patient from the front and I'm going to ask my partner to come in behind and take C-spine. I'm going to assess pulse motor and sensory, starting with the hands. I'm feeling for radial pulses. Wiggle your fingers for me, please. Which finger am I touching? Pointer. Which finger am I touching? Pinky. Moving to the feet. Wiggle your toes for me. Which toe am I touching? The big toe. Which toe am I touching? The little toe. And I'm feeling for a pulse. I'm now going to measure and apply a collar. I'm going to match my fingers to this collar. We're going to apply. Moving in over the breastbone, we're going to center it under the chin. Make sure it doesn't interfere with breathing. We're now ready to apply the CAD. First thing we're going to do is move the patient forward. Supporting the chest on the head's count, we're going to count to three. One, two, three. Try not to go past 45 degrees, otherwise the patient won't have control of their own back. I'm going to just bring this in under my partner's arms, open it up, and release the leg straps. This patient is stable, so you can ask them to assist. Lift up your arms for me, please. We're going to make sure it's centered, and then we're going to move the patient back into their original position. Again, on the heads count. One, two, three. Now we're ready to tie the straps. In most kids, the straps are color-coded. We want to move the patient as little as possible. And we're going to feed and pull. Now we're going to put in the chest strap. When we do the chest strap, we want to allow the patient to breathe. So take a deep breath for me, please. Make it a snug, and then allow the patient to exhale. I'm going to check the other three straps to make sure they're good and tidy everything up. We're going to move on to secure the legs. Make sure it's under the buttocks. It comes up through the legs. Right to right and left to left. If it's a gentleman, make sure that we can ask him to adjust. And then we're going to feed and pull.
make sure all my straps are good. Once I've secured that, I'm ready to move to the head. The first thing I'm going to do is take over control of the head myself um, and check the space in the back. So to, in order to control the space in the back, we're going to roll the shoulders. On my partner's count. One, two, three. Moving back, making sure that we have no space. If there's still space between the padding and the head, we're going to pad that with some uh, trauma dressings or some cushioning. I'm going to hold the head now. My partner is going to bring in the head flaps. And I'm going to get the head straps. One secures the chin. Straight back. And one secures the forehead. Once I've completed that, I'm going to reassess my patient again for pulse motor and sensory. Feeling for radial pulses? Wiggle your fingers for me. Which finger am I touching? The thumb. Which finger am I touching? The pinky. Again, wiggle your toes for me. Which toe am I touching? Big toe. Which toe am I touching? All toe. Feeling for pulses? I'm now ready to move my patient. I'm going to secure them onto a backboard first and then move them to the stretcher. Once on the stretcher, I'm going to remove them from the backboard and the head and leave the collar in place.